I want to share another one of my favorite kind of make-do snacks with you. The other day we were talking about eating rice with butter and sugar and how comforting that was to a lot of us, how a lot of people eat it actually when they're sick and not feeling well. Well, today the recipe I'm going to share with you is even simpler, and it's one that Granny taught me to make when I was growing up here in the mountains of Appalachia and one that she ate herself when she was growing up. Now, Granny tells the story about herself that she was very picky when she was growing up growing up. She had, she come from a family of 11 siblings, nine of who lived to adulthood, and so there was a lot of people there, and, and uh, her mother, Granny Gazzy, my Granny Gazzy was a wonderful cook, so there was always, you know, big he heaping plates of different things to eat, but Granny was very picky, and a lot of times she was so picky and stubborn that she would go hungry instead of eating what was offered. She would just rather go hungry because she just didn't have that much of an appetite. But one thing that she could always eat was an arsh tater, Irish potato, white potato, what we call arsh potato. It's just a white potato and she would slice it really thinly and of course those were in the days when they had wood cook stoves and wood stoves to heat with and she would lay it on the top of the stove and let it brown on one side and then flip it over and let it brown on that side then she would sprinkle them with salt and she would just scoff them up and they were so good. She said that was what she would eat when she could think of nothing else that she wanted to eat and nothing else that was offered that day on the table that she wanted to eat. Well, after she was grown and married, then she started making them, and that's how she taught me to, in the oven, on broil. You put your oven on broil. Well, first step is, um, I've got a baking sheet here. I've got bought some olive oil on it, but you could use whatever kind of oil you want. And then the first step is you've got to slice your potatoes pretty thinly. So I have a mandolin. That's what I like to use. You can use a knife if you... Um, if you want to, that works well too. You just need to get them. It's a weird thing. You need to. It's one of those things you got to kind of play around with. You want to get them thin enough where that they cook pretty quickly because you're broiling them, uh, but not so thin enough that they just melt into the pan and stick. So it might be something that you kind of get have to play around a, a little bit with. And then once you do that, then you just lay them out on your on your uh, baking sheet there. You can sprinkle them with whatever kind of seasoning you want. I like just salt, that's just what I use. And you can also try using, I have a sweet potato here. I'm gonna try a few of those, although normally I, that, I would not do that. I would just use the, the arsh potato. And these are so good as a snack, as I said, with some ketchup, some mustard. I like to eat them that way. But also, they make a pretty good accompaniment to uh, a din you know, dinner or supper. So if you're having maybe hot dogs or hamburgers or something like that, or anything that you wanted kind of some fried potatoes with, but you, this is kind of a quick alternative to doing, to actually frying them or going the deep fryer method. So now I'm going to get me some salt, sprinkle them. Now the thing about doing them in the oven, broiling them, is that you have to really watch them because it just takes, it's like you'll think, well they're never going to get done and then all of a sudden they're, they're brown or almost black. And so once the top part that I, I began to see that they're brown on top, I flip them over and they will kind of uh, bubble up, kind of get little air pockets in them. Mm, that's the really good part. So it, I can't really say how long it takes because your oven's likely to be different than mine and maybe the thickness of your potato, but it's just one of those things that you've really got to watch even though it doesn't take that long. So now I'm gonna get these in the oven.
Corey's helping me today and it's just a rainy day outside so this is the perfect day to have some of this comfort food and Corey loves these as much as I do so we've got them out of the oven and uh, we're going to eat them. Corey likes hers with ketchup and I do too but I also like mustard and I'm not even a big mustard fan but when I eat these I like mustard. Mm. I was always excited when Granny made these when I was a kid for a snack. They're so good. Really good. So now you need to try the, I've never tried the sweet potatoes like this, so we'll try those. Mmm. Good. They don't get as crunchy somehow. Mm-mm. But they're good. They would be good with like dipped in some kind of sweet sauce or something. Mm. But the others are so good. The thing about it is, is you can't stop eating them. Yeah. This will be our dinner for today. Basically. Mm -hmm. mm. I was kind of a picky eater too. So even today, sometimes I have trouble. If I can't think of exactly what I want to eat, then I'm just not interested in eating. I know that kind of sounds silly. I think Corey's like that too. Definitely and Katie. Like but when I this is one of those things I could eat. I mean, I could think, well, I could make some of the oven fries or oven potato chips and then make me a piece of toast or something, and then that would be a meal. I could eat that. It's always good to have things like that in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. Recipes, I mean, mm -hmm. things to cook. So we hope you enjoyed seeing one of our favorite kind of snacks that we make here in the mountains of Appalachia that Granny taught us. And I'm sure someone taught her that when she was a picky girl growing up in the, uh, there in the Culberson area. I'm sure she didn't come up with it on her own. I guess Granny Gazzy taught it to her. But we hope that you enjoyed it. If you're familiar with this and this is one of your favorite foods, we hope you'll leave a comment and tell us about it. And if not, we hope you'll try it. And as always, we hope you'll just keep dropping back by to help us celebrate Appalachia. I don't know. Crazy. I'm good, Mama. Make me stop. I'm not. We gotta eat them. And there's a crunchy one. Crispity, crunchity. These got crunchier on this pan. Mm, it's generous for good. It's usually it's vice versa. I know, that's my. It's a wonky pan, but it's my favorite. But I just know that they got more crispy in this pan. They're better crispy on this pan, I think. Yeah, but only one. I mean, that's the pan mm -hmm. that we usually... Those are really good. Mm -hmm. No, I really ain't gonna want to eat lunch. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm good. Very good.